It took me over four months to finish the first Kingdom Hearts game, but it's not because I was doing some difficult challenge like beating the game on proud mode at level one or perfecting a platinum speedrun. I kind of did the exact opposite of that in a way. But don't let that news disappoint you because I would argue that what I did took way more courage, way more strength, way more skill, and a tiny bit of patience. I chose to stay in the tutorial world of Kingdom Hearts and didn't progress through the game at all until Sora reached max level. This is the Destiny Islands level 100 challenge. Let's start off by addressing one of the two elephants in the room. What's the point? And honestly, it's a fair question, because I very easily could have just modded or cheated my way to max stats and then just completely bullied my way through the game, rendering the challenge pointless. But the Destiny Islands grind is more than just throwing Heartless and Lockers and giving them swirlies. I like to compare this challenge to those boring movies about those hobbits returning a, a ring to a mountain where Dobby lives and practices magic. I don't know, I never actually finished those movies. But I do know that the story is always about the journey and not about the destination except for when the story is about the destination and not about the journey. So maybe this challenge was pointless, just like those dog Lord of the Ring movies. Well, it's too late to dwell on the past, so let's just jump into it. What I've gathered about the internet is that people don't care unless you go big or go home. So I kept that in mind when I decided which XP ride I should take, which meant that I was forced to start my journey at dawn. So instead of 880,000 experience required to achieve level 100, it was actually a whopping 980,000 experience. See, go big or go home. It's not as bad as it sounds. It's only an extra 100k, and what's an extra 100,000 when you've already accumulated eight times that amount? Now, the most important part of this monumental challenge was choosing the correct dream weapon when Sora is messing around in his heart. And for this grind, you're looking directly at the shield because it's all about the tech points. Those are those experience points that are awarded to Sora whenever he parries an enemy's attack. More on that later. That's all the setup there was because the rest of this challenge just involved me repeatedly throwing my head against the wall. Kind of like that time I decided to watch the director's cut of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So there are actually six different ways of torturing Sora during this challenge. And I have a series of short videos that gives brief information into each of the XP guarding methods on Destiny Island. So check those out if you're interested. But for the sake of this challenge, I opted into sparring with Titus for hours on end as it is hands down the fastest way to accumulate experience while you're trapped on the islands. It's also just a very easy loop to learn. Step one, initiate the fight with Titus. Step two, immediately run away from Titus. Step three, when Titus starts chasing you, turn around towards him and attack him as he's attacking you. Note, there's only one move that Titus uses that will net you any tech points. So you'll need to let him chase you for about half a second before you initiate that parry to ensure that he uses the right attack. Step four, repeat steps one through three. And it's that simple. Just keep doing that over and over until Sora is level 100. But there actually is a little more information to keep in mind if you plan on attempting this challenge. In Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, there's a new ability called Tech Boost that increases the amount of tech points Sora receives for a parry. A single tech boost adds an additional amount of tech points equal to the base amount of tech points. For example, if we look at Titus, whose attack grants you two tech points upon performing a successful parry, equipping one tech boost will grant four tech points, and two tech boosts will grant six tech points, etc. Remember, tech points equal experience points. There are four total tech boosts that can be acquired through Final Mix, but two of them require Sora to leave Destiny Islands. So for the challenge, I only had access to the two that come from leveling. And with the Dream Shield, I was able to get that first tech boost earliest at level 12. So for the first 12 levels, I only earned two experience per parry, but I felt like I optimized the loop pretty well, so it allowed me to earn 400 experience every 10 minutes. But once level 12 came along, those numbers doubled to four experience per parry and around 800 experience every 10 minutes. Unfortunately, it would be another 69 levels before that second tech boost showed up but it wasn't the dream shield's fault because it doesn't matter which weapon is chosen because that second tech boost will not appear until level 81. another big checkpoint for the challenge was level 39 when another final mix exclusive ability approached and that ability was sliding dash sliding dash modified step three in the loop ever so slightly when it showed up but the changes made a huge difference over time so instead of turning around and waiting for titus to attack so i could parry his attack all i had to do was run away and as soon as he started chasing me press the attack button to initiate a slide dash that delivered Sora right to his face and automatically performed a parry. All in all, sliding dash saved off about three fourths of a second per parry. Now that's all there really was to it. Starting the challenge and reaching the first checkpoint took me one hour and 18 minutes to accomplish. And that would be the fastest time for any of the checkpoints I hit throughout the entirety of the challenge. As checkpoint two happened 15 hours later at the 16 hour and 59 minute mark. But that was nothing in comparison to checkpoint three, which happened after 199 hours and 56 minutes of total play time. And thanks to that second in tech boost it was just a hop skip and a jump away to the final goal and after 252 hours of grinding here's what happened there it is level 100 guys without 
leaving Destiny Islands. Feels good. Let's go. For all the naysayers out there who don't believe I did this challenge without cheating, I have a playlist that contains every single stream of the challenge. So just watch all of those VODs and then get back to me. So now I'm officially one of a very few number of people to achieve level 100 on Destiny Islands. Now what do I do? What do you mean? Now we can finally play the game. And play the game is exactly what I did. After spending over 250 hours on Destiny Islands, you would think I wanted to get off the island as soon as possible. But I thought it was only fair to fight each islander one last time before I stepped off the islands for good. So I spent about 5 minutes fighting each islander, including the trio fight. But after the fun fighting was over, it was time for Sora to finish his chores. After collecting the materials for Kyrie, Sora was finally able to rest. But it didn't really matter because day 2 meant more item collecting. Now, before you can give Kyrie the items for the raft, you must race Riku. And I was looking forward to racing him because I know exactly how to win the race 10 out of 10 times. Unfortunately, I did lose the race due to the rotation of the earth speeding up for a split second causing me to accidentally press the jump button too soon. But none of that matters because darkness is swallowing the island whole while Sora is gifted the Keyblade, which means first things first, it's time to erase some shadows from existence. And it is just so satisfying listening to the pops from those shadows after they die with one swing of the Keyblade. But now that we have the Sacred Keyblade, it's time to face the first boss of the game post Destiny Islands grind, Darkseid. Darkseid took a whole 11 seconds to defeat with the crazy stats that Sora possesses, which is insane. But I bet you're wondering why Darkseid didn't just fall after one hit. Well, in the Kingdom Hearts series, there's a fun mechanic called a damage ceiling that ruins a little bit of the fun. So even though I'm dealing tons of damage, the bosses will only feel a portion of that damage. So keep that in mind for the rest of the video. But nonetheless, Darkseid was defeated in 11 seconds, which means it's time to let Destiny Islands fall to darkness and leave this place forever. Sora then mysteriously lands in the best town in any Kingdom Hearts game, aka Traverse Town. It was here that I remembered that I never equipped any of the abilities that Sora learned through leveling other than the ones necessary to complete the grind. So I made sure to equip those abilities to really make sure the wheels fly off the wagon. Next up on the list was fighting Leon. And personally, if I'm casually playing the first Kingdom Hearts, I won't even attempt to fight Leon and just sit back and take the L. But this time around, Sora was strong and beefy, so I blasted through Leon in 10 seconds. But Sora still passed out and woke up in the hotel, so nothing really changed there. Goofy and Donald await for us in District 3, so Sora needs to make his way over there. But they're not the only thing waiting for him there, as it's time to defeat Guard Armor. Which, by the way, I prefer Guard Armor's final mix color scheme. Let me know how wrong I am in the comments. Anyway, it took me 27 seconds to get rid of Guard Armor and officially welcome Sora's new companions to the party. After this hard fought battle, Sora is gifted the fire spell from Donald, and as you can see, Sora currently has 8 bars of MP in Traverse Town. So I did what any normal person would do. With the new team form, Sora, Donald, and Goofy board the gummy ship and set out on an adventure to rid very specific Disney worlds of their darkness. The first world on the itinerary is Wonderland, and this is a very straightforward world. Alice has been accused of taking the Queen of Hearts live, and Sora is tasked with proving her innocence. There are four pieces of evidence that Sora can find to aid him in his task, but you can get away with only grabbing one piece of evidence, which is exactly what I did, because I was frothing at the mouth to wail on those card soldiers. In order to beat this boss battle, Sora needs to destroy the tower in the middle of the zone. So I didn't need to attack those card soldiers at all, but come on, I'm level 100 in Wonderland. I gotta have a little fun. But when I finally focused on the tower, it took one combo to get rid of each of the wheels and then two additional combos to dismantle the building itself. The whole process took around 15 seconds, but now it's time to face Trig Master, the true boss battle in Wonderland. This was a very one-sided fight. In the 37 seconds it took to beat Trig Master, I never gave him a chance to even attempt an attack. After sending Trick Master to the Shadow Realm, it was time to visit Deep Jungle, also known as the most poorly designed world in the entire series. Seriously, I get lost every time I visit the Deep Jungle, and when it's time to gather the slides, I spend about 10 minutes looking for the one slide that I missed. Anyway, upon Asura's arrival, Saber is waiting for him in the treehouse, ready to make his move. But Saber really bit off more than he could chew this time, because it took less than a combo to defeat that house cat. And every interaction after this initial meeting went exactly the same way. So after saving the groups of gorillas for Jane and then later saving Jane herself, Sora made his way to the bamboo area of the world where Clayton was patiently waiting for them. And it's always nice wiping that smug look off of Clayton's face, but it's even more satisfying when both phases of the battle only take 1 minute and 9 seconds. After 
After defeating Clayton, it is time to go to the next world on the list. But before the gang could set out, Sora was gifted the first Keyblade that's not the Kingdom Key, the Jungle Key. Usually getting a new Keyblade in a Kingdom Hearts run is very exciting, but since Sora is already dealing more damage than the bosses can handle, it's not really going to make a difference. So in this case, it's not that useful this time around. On to the next one. And this world was one of the fastest worlds because I didn't even do it. Olympus is entirely skippable in the first Kingdom Hearts. And honestly, I didn't see a reason to do the world during this run. But looking back now, I kind of regret not even landing on Olympus because it would have been nice to add thunder to my ever growing list of spells and just zap away every enemy that looked at me funny. But the run went fine without it. So no harm, no foul. After performing the maneuver I like to call the Olympus flyby, it set the gummy ship on course for Sora's second visit to Traverse Town. This visit is necessary for the gummy ship's navigational system. System because as of now, Sora, Dawn, and Goofy are limited to the first four worlds. So good thing Sid is here to upgrade the gummy ship for them. And while he is hard at work on that, Sora is tasked with delivering a book to Merlin the Wizard. In the Magician's study, Sora is introduced to the secrets of that book, and it's the Hundred Acre Woods. But just like Olympus, this world is not necessary if the goal is just to see the credits. So Sora is going to let the book collect a lot of dust for this run. The Fairy Godmother is also hanging around in the Magician's study, and she's important if you care about summons. But as someone who just likes swinging, a keyblade around and forgets about magic 90% of the time, summons are just there, you know? Anyway, trouble follows Sora everywhere, and this second visit to Traverse Town is no different. Guard Armor makes another appearance and he is out for revenge, but this time around he has an ace up his sleeve. Guard Armor changes his floating appendages around and transforms into Reverse Armor, but this transformation does nothing to help as it took less than a minute to send Reverse Armor to the Shadow Realm again. And after this epic fight was concluded, the gummy ship was ready for more Disney adventures. Agrabah is next up on the list, and right away, Sora needs to help Aladdin in the desert, but first we need to find a way to get there, because for some reason the gummy ship can travel across the universe, but it can't travel a few yards to a different location on the same world. So Sora trespasses into Aladdin's house and saves the magic carpet in order to hitch a ride to Aladdin's location. Once Aladdin is saved, Sora rendezvous back at his house, but Jafar is up to no good and he kidnaps Princess Jasmine, so Sora activates hero mode, and the pot centipede is the first victim of Sora's wrath. And after another one-sided battle, Sora cracked every pot on that centipede in 21 seconds. Now Sora was able to travel back to the Cave of Wonders where he just saved Aladdin, but this time the cave is alive. But it's only kicking for about a minute and 45 seconds before Sora dispelled the cave of its evil ways. Sora then had to travel through the caves to reach the far and Jasmine, and after a grueling 20 second battle, Jafar got absolutely pissed off and fused himself with Genie, thus forming Genie Jafar. This fight is usually a speedrun killer because the good old RNG takes over Iago's flight pattern. But when Sora is level 100, RNG is nothing to be afraid of. Sora freed Genie after duking it out with that lamp for 58 seconds. And after the team makes it back to Aladdin's house, Sora says his goodbyes and travels on to the next world. But while the gummy ship is on course to the next adventure, the giant whale monstro swallows the entire ship whole. And Sora, Donald, and Goofy are now trapped in the belly of a whale. Inside the whale is an old man with an annoying puppet named Geppetto, and his puppet Pinocchio is being a little stinker. So he asked Sora to save him and bring him back. Now Sora needs to go deep into the whale and look for Pinocchio. While I was doing this run, I was informed of a way to navigate the innards of the whale without getting lost and my mind was blown. So each door that leads to a new area has a different color, and the green doors indicate the way to reach the cage parasite while the blue doors indicate the way to getting back to Geppetto and his ship. I bet most of you knew this information already, I just thought it would be nice to share. Pinocchio was trapped inside the cage parasite, but after a 20 second battle he was trapped no more. So now that that Pinocchio has reunited with Geppetto, it was time to board the gummy ship once again and head on to the next one. And this trip takes us to my favorite world in the first Kingdom Hearts, Halloween Town. Sora, Dawn, and Goofy get awesome outfits to fit the Halloween theme, the Harless designs are cool, and the music is just so catchy. Sora teams up with Jack Skellington to help him and his friends keep the residents of Halloween Town in check. But of course, Oogie Boogie and those three rascals, Lock, Shock, and Barrel, are up to no good. Sora puts the three kids in timeout and it only took him 19 seconds to wrangle them up. And after the kids promised to behave, it was time to stop Oogie Boogie from being a nuisance. And I gotta say, I love this world, but this boss fight ain't it. I figured that at level 100, I would be able to defeat Oogie Boogie after one cycle of his dice throw. But along with the damage ceiling that each boss already has, Oogie has a mechanic that prevents Sora from dealing too much damage before he gets kicked off his platform. And then Sora has to wait to make his way back up to deal more damage. So after learning that, along with a few brain farts, this fight fight took 4 minutes, and that would be the longest fight for the run. But after that embarrassing fight, Oogie fuses with his manor and becomes Oogie's manor. During this fight, Sora has to defeat the purple pimples of darkness on the manor's exterior, 
and this fight also had a few brain farts so it took me another embarrassing two and a half minutes to beat. Halloween Town is still my favorite but this was definitely my least favorite experience with the world. But the brain farts didn't end there because then I realized that I never opened the chest back in Monstro to get the high jump ability. So Sora had to turn the ship back around and get swallowed by Monstro again and swim back to the ship to get a high jump. But then I realized I never did the second cage parasite fight either. So Sora headed up to the upper chamber to finally give the cage parasite the rematch it's been looking for. And cage parasite put up a good battle but Sora still destroyed it in 38 seconds. So after this rare visit to Monstro, Sora boards the gummy ship again to save more Disney worlds. But while the gang are in space, Captain Hook captures the gummy ship, so Sora is forced to board the gummy ship and enter Neverland. As soon as Sora leaves the ship's cabin, he is greeted by his own shadow. And instead of doing the smart thing and just leaving the ship, he decides to follow it all the way to the captain's cabin, where he is then forced to fight the anti version of himself. This fight took a whopping 49 seconds. I know, right? Anti Sora is kind of an annoying fight because he likes to run away and just waste your time. But it's hard to run away from the main character who just pulverizes everything before there's a chance to retaliate. Sora finally has access to the deck of the ship and good old Captain Hook is there waiting for his and Peter Pan's arrival. So before Sora can start sparring with Captain Hook, there are a few ways of enemies to take care of. But once Captain Hook decided to join the party, Sora was able to defeat him in 37 seconds. Now that the threats of Neverland are dealt with, Sora, Dawn, and Goofy are gifted the power of flying. That means no more gummy ship. Just kidding, they still need the gummy ship to travel across the universe. But now it's time to head back to Traverse Town because the gummy ship's abilities are limited once again. On the way back to Traverse Town, the crew did another flyby maneuver. But this time, they were maneuvering around the worst world in the game, Atlantica. This world, just like Olympus and the 100 Acre Wood, is not necessary to roll the credits of the game. But I like to have the icons filled out on the map. So after a quick visit back to Twilight Town and Sid upgrades the gummy ship again, it's now time for the coolest world in the game, Hollow Bastion. Sora, Dollar, and Goofy step off the gummy ship and are greeted by Riku and the Beast throwing hands. And Riku is winning. Sora tries to stop Riku, but ends up getting his keyblade stolen by Riku, as well as his friends just abandoning him. Riku then leaves Sora with a wooden sword and no crew. The Beast assists a helpless Sora in unlocking the door to Hollow Bastion and facing the Edgelord himself. But this time, it's for real. Through the power of friendship, Sora was able to get back the Keyblade and use it to defeat Riku in about a minute and a half. After Riku runs away again, Sora, Dawn, and Goofy make their way up the castle, and when they made it to the top, they were greeted by a pissed off Maleficent. But she wasn't pissed off for too long, because after 61 seconds, she was defeated. Of course, villains don't know when to stay down, so this was only round one, and during round two, Maleficent turns into a dragon. She did last a little longer during this round, but ultimately she was defeated in less than two minutes. Maleficent finally gets out of Sora's hair, but then Riku decides that he wanted a rematch, and that rematch didn't even last as long as their first encounter. It only took 1 minute and 5 seconds to get Riku to back down. But since Sora has to out emo Riku, Sora decides to unlock his heart turning himself into a Shadow Heartless. Shadow Sora makes his way down to the first floor of Hollow Bastion and sees Donald and Goofy protecting Kyrie. And then Kyrie somehow recognizes that the scary Shadow Heartless was actually Sora, and Sora returns to his body. So now that the band plus Kyrie are all together, they make one last trip to Traverse Town. Here, Sora had a quick chat with Kairi and was gifted the Oathkeeper Keyblade. And this was very useful because Sora needed to get his damage output back above the damage ceiling because the bosses in the endgame are a tad stronger than the other bosses you have faced thus far. After Sora said goodbye to everyone in Traverse Town and got the gummy ship tuned up one last time, it was time to head back to Hollow Bastion to finish what the Heartless started. Sora landed in Hollow Bastion and had to walk all the way back up the tower. And once he was there, he was informed of a giant monstrosity in a portal located in the room in which he just unlocked his own Heart. Sora went headfirst into the portal and took down the behemoth in 1 minute and 12 seconds. And then he saves Hollow Bastion. But it wasn't over there because there's one last world to conquer. But before leaving, Sora had to go talk to Belle in order to get the best Keyblade in the game, the Divine Rose. Sora's damage output is already capped, so the Divine Rose didn't do anything other than look completely badass. But now, it was time for the end game. Sora and his friends arrived to the world that never was and were greeted by a world completely falling apart. Sora had to make his way through the cracked world and very quickly was face to face with another behemoth. This behemoth was a joke in comparison to the one back in Hollow Bastion, as it only took 40 seconds to slay that beastly creature. After traversing through the world a bit longer and fighting some pretty tough enemies that were just dropping like flies, Sora made it to an area with portals to worlds that he's previously visited. The only portals that you must enter and clear are the green portals. Those portals indicate worlds whose keyblades were not closed during the game. So for this run, Sora had to clear out the portals for Olympus and Atlantica. And after clearing those portals, it was time to fight the devil himself, Chernabog. 
that menacing creature wasn't so menacing this time around knowing that Sora had been training on Destiny Islands for a fight like this. And he was slain in 50 seconds. Sora then flew down into the crater that Chernobog created and navigated his way to this closed off area where the third and last behemoth of the game was waiting for him. This area of the game isn't a boss battle per se, but personally I always have a bad time here so I like to consider the behemoth plus the waves of high level Heartless a boss. The seemingly endless horde of enemies were defeated in 4 minutes and 11 seconds, and for reference Oogie Boogie by himself took 4 minutes. But with all of that out of the way, it was time for the 15 phase boss fight that wraps up every JRPG. On the other side of that giant white door was the place where it all started, Destiny Islands. It was the place that trapped Sora for 250 hours, so it was nice to see the world make one last appearance. But this was not a glorious reunion, because the main villain of the game was waiting there to stop Sora once and for all. Handsome tried, but failed miserably, because not only did Sora have max stats, he also had home court advantage. Sora defeated Ansem in 1 minute and 52 seconds, but this was no time to celebrate because Goofy and Donald were nowhere to be found, so Sora just aimlessly waltzed his way into another encounter with Darkseid. And you would have thought after 3 encounters that Darkseid would just change his strategy, but nope, it's the same old tricks, and Sora put him to sleep in 47 seconds. The boss rush did not let up though, and Ansem and his puppet showed back up, but this time it was mano a mano. Kinda. Without the help from Dollar and Goofy, this was one of the longest fights in the run at 3 minutes and 12 seconds. But even after a second beating, Ansem just wouldn't stay down and he turned himself into a giant demon boat thing. This crazy form went down very quickly though, as it took Sora 1 minute and 40 seconds to let Ansem know that his strat was terrible. But again, Ansem just doesn't know when to give up. Ansem trapped Sora in a purgatory that he had to fight his way out of, and once he was free, Ansem demon boat grew barnacles that Sora was kind enough to remove for him. And thankfully, this exposed a portal to Goofy's purgatory. Sora freed Goofy and the two had to fight the actual face of the boat, and that took about 45 seconds. Another portal appeared, and you know, if Sora sees a portal, he's gonna go through it. Donald was waiting for them on the other side of the portal, and it didn't take long to free him and then get back to the task at hand. This time on the outside, Sora, Donald, and Goofy had to rearrange Ansem Demon Boat's bubble guts, and after all that, the gang met with Ansem one last time. Uh, time? I think that's time. That's time. Let's go. I don't. I don't know when speedrunners uh, call time. If you break down the total time of the 258 hours, 38 minutes, and 43 seconds it took to do this challenge, you would see that about 252 hours were spent grinding on Destiny Islands, about 6 hours were spent aimlessly wandering around the various worlds, and only 28 minutes and 33 seconds were actually spent fighting bosses. And that is a wrap on the Destiny Islands level 100 challenge. But now let's finally address the second elephant in the room. Was it worth it? I think it was.